So this is the fourth Sunday in our gospel series, The Source, as we work our way through John's gospel, chapter 6. But tonight we're going to look at both the gospel and the second reading with a view toward active participation, both the participation, the way we participate here in the sacred lit liturgy, and also how we live out our faith as we go beyond these four walls, beyond this Sunday out into the world. So I want to start by asking just a few questions. You don't have to remember them all, just think about them as I, as I read them out. What does it look like to be a follower of Jesus Christ? What might it look like to be fully engaged and actively participating in your faith, in living out that faith, that is to be a fully alive disciple, as we say in our vision statement, a fully alive disciple of Jesus Christ, rooted in Jesus Christ, who reflects his love and mercy throughout all the ordinary moments of our day. What would that look like? How would, it, how would embracing that view of the faith through that lens maybe change how I view myself, my place in all of this? what I choose to do, what I desire to do, how I live. So what does this active participation look like both within this celebration and beyond? That's where we're gonna go, so stick with me. First, let's look at our active participation during Mass. We've actually been talking about that for the last few weeks in different ways, so I'm going to look at it in terms of what it is not. Active participation in the liturgy is not primarily external activity, activism, or being busy. It's not primarily about being an usher or a greeter, a choir member, a lector or commentator, or any other liturgical role, including deacon or priest for that matter. It's not also, it's also not about our postures and gestures. You know, we do a lot of that. We come in, we sign ourselves with holy water, we make the sign of the cross, we genuflect uh, to show our honor and our love uh, to, to Jesus in the tabernacle. We enter the pew, we kneel down, we stand up, we sit down, we talk to one another. These are all outward manifestations, or should be outward manifestations of something that is deep within us. Something that is at our core that guides how we live. This act of participation goes also beyond the liturgical celebration, as I mentioned. I mentioned also a few weeks ago that at the end of the Mass, the deacon, in this case tonight, me, I will dismiss you and send you forth back out into the world to share the love of God and the good news of his love for all of us with others out in the world. This is our mission, right? This is part of what we are expected to do by virtue of our baptismal promises. As priest, prophet, and king, we have roles, important roles to play in this great adventure. But it's not easy. I'm not going to lie to you. It is not an easy thing to do. Thank God that we have his grace to equip us to be able to do it. Our lives are so busy. There's so much demanding of our time and our limited time. I can think back to when my family was younger. Actually, it's still young because I'm living out my family now through my grandchildren. Uh, but I can think back to when my own children were young that all of these demands on our life distracted us from making the right decisions and setting right priorities. And that's important to know. Our kids are busy too, aren't they? It's school, they've got schoolwork, they've got sports that they have to do, they've got so many other activities, and then of course the culture is constantly presenting opportunities to be distracted from what really matters. I can mention one right off the top of my head that I think would resonate with everyone because it can consume so many of our little, uh, so many of the few hours that we have left, and that's getting trapped into the social media cycle to just be like that. It's hard enough given that for many of us, the majority of our waking hours are consumed with work, having to do things, having to travel someplace, 
Where does God fit into all of this? How do I fit him in? You know, our work should be an opportunity for us to grow deeper in our relationship with God. Our work should be an opportunity for holiness, for sanctification, that will allow us to live out our vocation and, and, and be the leaders in our family that we need to be, to be able to hand on the faith to our children in a way that is effective and uh, attractive. But all too often, we sacrifice our family to support our work, and it's supposed to be the other way around. Our work is supposed to support our family. I remember, again, uh, back when my family was young, my son uh, was confirmed in eighth grade. And I remember being there, and it was a joyful day. We were very happy. His confirmation was a big deal. But afterwards, with all that joy in my heart, I started thinking, you know, the celebration that we have planned after my son had been confirmed was not quite as big as the celebration we had when he was awarded Top Gun in soccer. And I started thinking, you know, we celebrate our children's victories on the sports field to a greater degree and with more excitement than we do their sacramental milestones. And that's just wrong. Thankfully, I had a wife, many of you know her, Kathy, who challenged me to set these things straight. We thought we were doing the best we could, we thought, but it became obvious that we weren't. So she challenged me to rethink how we were living, to be more present to our family. I was so busy with work, working long hours, traveling frequently, that sometimes I felt I wasn't home at all. So she challenged me to be a better dad and a better husband, to be engaged in our parish life, to get involved in more ways. In our second reading today, St. Paul tells us that we must watch carefully how we live. He says, don't live as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity. You know, he wrote that to the Ephesians, but he also, he also wrote it to us Roswellians and these Kabakazis and all of the other folks that live around here. He's writing this to you. He tells us not to be ignorant of who we are and why we are, to know our place, to know why we are here, not to miss the opportunity. I think that was one of my biggest breakthroughs, realizing that, you know, God loves us. He's created us for himself for a purpose. He's got a plan for our life. Where was God in all of this? Well, he had the answer. I didn't. So I had to turn to him. Knowing I'm not that accident of nature just changed everything. We made an intentional decision to become disciples of Jesus Christ, to follow him, to do what he was asking us to do. And we had a great realization from a father, from a priest over at St. Anne's, Father Jim Hurley, he says, why don't, instead of you figuring out what he wants you to do, why don't you ask him to tell you what he wants you to do? So that became our prayer. This encounter with the Lord equipped us to reset our priorities. Eventually, it led me to hearing the call to serve as your deacon, as your deacon here at St. Peter Chanel. But you must, you must know that in spite of all this, the journey did not get easier all of a sudden. It's not like there's some magic pill that can make life easy. You know, this is symbolized by the very architecture of our church. Beginning with the baptismal font out in the narthex, we begin our journey toward heaven, straight down this path of life. And you'll notice there's five emblems in the center aisle. These represent the wounds of Christ suffered during his passion. But they also represent our own sufferings and trials and difficulties that we continue to face in this broken and fallen world. Our journey to heaven is going to lead right through that cross. But he's going to make sure you're able to do that. He's given us a purpose. And so I would challenge you to discover that purpose, to live that purpose, to commit yourself to that purpose. As an intentional disciple who loves and follows and obeys Jesus Christ, first and foremost, you must be a person of prayer. If you love somebody, you spend time with them. Right? And so prayer and worship and word and sacrament, these are moments for us to spend time with the God that we love. And speaking of sacraments, he's instituted the sacraments, one of which we're celebrating tonight, as a means of giving us his grace that equips us for this journey. 
You know, he says <clears throat> in, our, in our gospel today, he says, whoever receives him in Holy Communion will have life. He says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I mean, is that not exciting? Does that not make it possible for you to do the impossible? You also need to be a person of love and service. When people look at you, do they see the love of God reflected in your life? That's what's going to attract people to this faith, part of our mission, to take the good news out, to invite people in. And that leads to our final point. That is, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have to be intentional in your willingness to give testimony, to be a witness to the Lord, to share his love and mercy with others without hiding the fact that you're a Catholic, right? So that people know what motivates you, what causes you to be the person that you are. You know, I know that's kind of vague as a testimony, so just a few little things. If you're kind and loving to people, that's going to attract them to you, right? So be kind and loving and don't hide your Catholicism, your Christianity. Also, make sure that when you have the opportunity to do small things, like if you're at a restaurant with your family, be sure to always say grace and make the sign of the cross. Nobody's gonna chase you out of the restaurant, hopefully, and if they do, they do, right? And also, when you're with one another, there, this happens all the time, that you have the opportunity to pray for people. Tonight, three different people offered to pray for me. What a blessing that was. Don't be afraid to look at someone and say, how can I pray for you? What do you need? Put yourself out there, no matter how scary that might be, it'll open up all sorts of doors. And then finally, be joyful. Don't be dour. No one's attracted to someone who's sour. They're attracted to people who are joyful. So no matter what you're going through, God loves you. Be joyful about it and carry out his will. He says, St. Paul says to the Ephesians, make the most of this opportunity because the days are evil. And I, I believe that applies to us, especially in our day. We've got such a responsibility to one another to go out into the mission field and be joyful and make the most of this opportunity. So I'd ask you to pray with me right now and maybe formulate your own prayer that you might pray each morning. It goes something like this. Dear Lord, thank you for seeing me safely through this past night and granting me the opportunity to serve you in another day. I want to be your disciple. I place all of my hope, all of my trust, all my faith in you. Fill me with your grace to know and understand how I am to serve you and the people you place in my care today. And grant me the love and courage to do so now and forever. Amen.